Welcome to day 11 of the 12 Days of Sinmas. Sinners, I cannot believe it. We are officially in the home stretch for Sinmas. It's just insane to me that I have been uploading for almost 12 days straight. Who knew I had it in me? And my gift to you for the 11th day of Sinmas is... Tylenol. Store brand Tylenol at that because I imagine this video will give you a tension headache and you will definitely need some Tylenol afterwards. But what are we doing for the 11th day? Well, we are going to be going through the Twitter account called Bad Medical Takes. This account essentially reposts terrible takes on medicine and health found throughout the internet, typically from other users on Twitter. And I find it funny that Bad Medical Takes started in March 2020, which seems to correlate with another event that started in March 2020. And it makes sense because I feel like the amount of medical misinformation in the past almost two years, almost, oh my God, it's going to be three years since the start of the pandemic. I, wow, where'd the time go? Regardless, I think we can all agree that we have seen a rise in medical misinformation over the past three years. And today, you know, in order to cope with our anger and frustration with these people, we're going to laugh at them. So the first post we have is from a Twitter account called Died Suddenly. I think this is probably in relation to anti-vaxxers, specifically on the right, saying that people are dying suddenly because of the vaccine, even though, you know, correlation and causation are not the same thing. But anyway, Matthew McConaughey's fully vaxxed wife, Camila, has fallen down a flight of stairs and broken her neck. The couple originally took a stand against childhood mandates, but then caved from pressure and volunteered their son, hashtag died suddenly, to which someone responded, to be fair, I don't think vax status has anything to do with preventing a broken neck when you fall down the stairs. To which someone else replied, yes, if you're not getting blood to your brain, it does because a healthy woman should be able to walk up or down the stairs. Just be aware. Does, why did no one tell me that the vaccine restricts blood flow to your brain? You know, if the vax did that, I think they would tell us. But I looked further into it and after Bad Medical Takes reposted this interaction on Twitter, someone responded with, I found her actual post about it. Her pants were too long and got tangled around her shoe. I don't think the vaccine makes pants longer. Yeah, I don't think so either. That is not necessarily how vaccines work. And I'm sure we can all relate to tripping over a long pair of pants or just tripping over something in general. General. I don't think Camila's experience is unique. That is, I'm sure, something everybody has done at one point in their life. Maybe not injuries to this extent, but we've all we've all tripped and fallen over something. So you might want to ice your shoulder uh, from that reach. Anyway, next post. Depression is a choice. It isn't genetic and it isn't caused by food or media. You either stop feeling sorry for yourself cold turkey or or you find ways to explain and justify your decision of feeling low. Yeah, why don't you just stop being depressed? Have you ever heard of that? Hey, how about you consider just be happy, am I right? This is similar to telling a person with anxiety to just relax, to just calm down, or telling a person with OCD to stop obsessing. I'm pretty sure depression can be genetic. If you have other depressed members of your family, you are predisposed to having depression as well. You know, trauma can cause an onset of depression. Bad life experiences can also aggravate your depression. I mean, for example, just think of how many people's mental health got worse during the pandemic. But like, there's only so much we can do about the depression. Some of it is out of our hands. It's a chemical imbalance. Like, yes, we can talk to a therapist. We can take psychiatric medications. We can learn healthy coping mechanisms to help with our depression symptoms. But to just say that we choose to live this way is so inaccurate to the actual depression experience and just further stigmatize is mental health in our society. So next we have a screenshot from TikTok. And I would say besides Twitter, TikTok is just a home for so much misinformation. Guys, just because you have good peripheral vision doesn't mean your childhood was traumatic. Are those related? Do, do people with childhood trauma just automatically have good peripheral vision? <laughs> What? How did the two even correlate? But hey, I get it. Lying online can be fun. Homosexuality cannot be genetic because homosexuals cannot reproduce. First of all, I'm not going to listen to the opinions from anyone named Dale. 
You're either homophobic or you're named Dale. You cannot be both at the same time. Pick a struggle, sir. I don't think homosexuality is genetic. However, some scientists have found that certain folks are predisposed to participating in same-sex activities due to certain genes which control our sexual function. I haven't seen anything about homosexuality being passed down throughout the generations. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. And just to address the second part, being gay and being fertile are mutually exclusive. I wonder what he has to say about all the straight people who are infertile and all the gay people with biological children. Does Dale think that a stork dropped off a newborn baby at a gay couple's household and now they're parents? How do you how do you think that works, Dale? Do we need to teach you the birds and bees again? Seamless logic here, I have to say. Anyway, next post. Crack gets a bad rap. Probably one of the most stigmatized, maligned, and misunderstood yet miraculous medicines in the world. 99.9% .9 of people in the world have probably never even tried it. There's a reason why most people have not tried crack. As my first tweet back, we'll do a thread that will run perpetual with random additions. Someone needs to resuspend this person's account, please. And then they accompanied this tweet with a photo of a literal crack pipe, crack tube. I don't know. I don't do drugs. I, can, I can't tell you what this exactly is. But never in my life have I heard someone say that we need to get rid of the stigma around crack. There is a reason why people don't support taking crack. It like people are addicted to this. Sh this sh kills people. That's why, weirdo. But allegedly it is a miraculous medicine. So who knows? Maybe I have crack in this Tylenol bottle. You'll never know. Also, you need to clean your friggin' crack tube, dude. Like, some of this looks like syrup. That looks like pepper. This kind of, like, dried up crack here kind of looks like one of those coffee doilies. PSA of the day, please don't do drugs. Please don't listen to this guy. Crack is not a miracle medicine. So this next one is another Twitter interaction. Insulin should never be something any person has to ration, which I think is true. A lot of you don't know this, but I used to work in a pharmacy back in the day, and I can't tell you how many times people have had to put back their medications or not pick them up because of the price. And I think that is really sad. It really speaks to the state of our healthcare system in the United States. I don't think that's something anyone should have to go through. And especially since insulin is so cheap to make, but pharmaceutical companies upcharge the medication. Anyway, some genius responded to this and said, cut the crabs to zero and no need for insulin in six months. Now, I'm not the most educated on diabetes, but I'm pretty sure crabs have nothing to do with the development of the disease. Definitely cut the crack to zero, you know, like the last person mentioned, but crabs eat as many crabs as you want within reason, obviously. Who doesn't love a good shellfish? I mean, lobster's better anyway, but hey, we all we all have our tastes. My religious beliefs don't affect you. As a lesbian woman in the United States, this is obviously not true. 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 I mean, considering how so many Christians were against the Respect for Marriage Act, yes, it does affect me. Lesbian just means doesn't understand biology. I, buddy, I don't think you understand biology. If anything, lesbians are fantastic at biology because at least we know where the G-spot is. I cannot say the same for most of you. Unpopular opinion. There is a physical difference in sex with women who have never used sex toys. Blasting your vagina with battery-powered gizmos has a physical effect and men can tell. I don't care who this offends. You know, I don't expect anything less from the underachieving, overshadowed brother of the most annoying man on the internet. Usually when someone is using sex toys, they are getting to know their body more, getting to know what they like and don't like, and just getting to know themselves via self-pleasure. So, so you could say that the women who have never used sex toys might be less experienced in the pleasure department. So I'm guessing that's why he likes them. But really what I'm seeing is a dude being intimidated by little plastic toys because they've made more women come than he ever will in his lifetime. With this tweet right here, this dude is just letting every woman who's potentially interested in him know that he sucks in the bedroom. I mean, if you're possibly willing to sleep with a tape brother, then you need to get your priorities straight. But hopefully, hopefully this wards some of you off. Quick reminder that a white parent of a mixed race child has more in common genetically with any random white person on the street than with their own child. We also have like 98% of the same DNA as a banana, so I really don't get your point. When a mixed race child is diagnosed with leukemia, every member of the child's own family is an incompatible donor. Listen, I'm not an expert on donating blood on blood types, but I don't think that's how that works.
So you're saying that a white person with a biracial child is going to have more DNA in common with a stranger than their own biological child? Do you hear yourself? Do I need to enlist you in the sex ed class with my buddy Dale? This seems like something Nick Fuentes would tweet. Let that be a lesson in that you don't have to share every thought with the internet. Sometimes you can you can keep them to yourself. We don't need to hear all of your intrusive thoughts. And that could be said for anyone. God gave woman an organ that serves no other purpose than sexual pleasure. She's using what God gave her. Women don't pee, menstruate. AFAB individuals pee out of their vaginas. The urethra and the vagina are two separate entities. They're, they're very mutually exclusive. Like this is the kind of guy who thinks that people can't pee with a tampon in, which is also false. Newsflash for anyone watching who didn't know. But what scares me is that this fucking dude can vote and that there are definitely many members of Congress who think exactly this way and have a say in my reproductive rights. I think that's just really comforting. Mm. You can't make this up. Inside these vaccines are RNA modifying nanotechnology that connects your body to 5G pentagram, which receives signals from CERN 666 and said supercomputer that powers CERN is called the Beast. CERN is located on the former Temple of Apollo. Okay. All right. I have a, I have a game for you. What's your name? Liz? Liz, I have a game for you. I'm going to put a picture right here. I'm going to put a picture right here and I'll put a picture right here. Now, what do all these pictures have in common? They are all grass and you should go touch it. Please go outside, get some fresh air in your lungs, get some sunlight on your skin as long as you wear SPF and maybe consider deleting your Twitter account. What's insane to me about these anti-vax people is how they think the government is microchipping them and tracking their every move with a vaccine when they're most likely tweeting from a smartphone, which already does that. And also, Susan, Liz, bitch, you're not that important. You're not important enough for the government to track all your whereabouts. To address the first half of her tweet, if the vaccine actually connected my body to 5G, that would actually be really convenient for me as a YouTuber because I wouldn't have to rely on my home's Wi-Fi. It can be quite unreliable sometimes. And if I was just connected to 5G, that would make things so much more convenient. So maybe I do want nanotechnology in my body. I don't know. Call me crazy. Last but not least, we have one more post. And and besties, my sinners at home, you might want to break out the Tylenol for this one. By the way, the trick with the pee volume also applies to women. The louder she pees, the bigger, wider, more sloppy her vagina. A good vagine creates a very decent and subtile sound. First of all, this person's profile picture is that of a Greek statue, which already makes me not trust your opinion. But is this guy like holding his ear up to like the doors of bathrooms in public and recording how fast or how hard a woman is peeing? Like, how do you tweet this without any second thought? How do you have this little self-awareness? Again, like with the other person, vagina, urethra, two different holes. And you know what? If a woman is peeing very loud, you know, maybe she just chugged three large water bottles earlier in the day and now she's peeing like a racehorse. Maybe women who pee loud are just very hydrated. But that's bad medical takes for you. Again, I hope you have that Tylenol on deck just in case you got a tension headache. But yeah, if you would like to see a part two to this video, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to leave a link to bad medical takes on Twitter so you can go check them out as well. If there are any specific Twitter accounts like this that you want me to check out and react to in the future, let me know in the comments as well. And in general, if you want to see me talk about anything moving forward, I have a Google form linked in the description where you could submit your video ideas. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a tiny, tiny thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thank you for spending the 11th day of Sin Miss with me. And I can't believe I'm saying this. I will see you tomorrow for the final day of Sidmus. I love you guys and I'll see you then. Bye!